pleased to have here on the Rich Eisen Show for the first time, uh, the star of Bosch. If you watch something on Amazon Prime, it's uh, because this show was a hit from the very beginning, and the seventh and final season of Bosch premieres this coming Friday on Amazon Prime Video. The actor Titus Welliver here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, sir? I'm well. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Big fan of yours. Thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Did you have any sense of how successful this show could be? Certainly when it's on a streamer that really wasn't doing very much at the time. What was that like for you to start this show, Titus Welliver? Well, you know, well, it was, I mean, it was a, it was a whole brave new world in that regard. I had no idea what to, you know, to anticipate. Uh, you know, my hope was that it, it would succeed um, and that it would, you know, find its audience. I mean, that being said, I think, you know, truth be known, our, our show is based on a series of, you know, hugely successful um, novels written by Michael Connolly, um, you know, global um, um, audience. And, uh, you know, it was my hope. But, you know, you never know, particularly when you have a, a, a you know, it's a literary source. You know, people are you know, they have their own kind of prejudice. And it was, you know, very, very possible that people were going to say, I'm not going to watch that. It's, you know, the, I, I do the same thing. I read a book and then somebody says, oh, they're making a film out of that. And then, you know, they, you see who's cast and you go, oh, I don't want to watch that. It's <laughs> going to be, it's going to be a train wreck. So fortunately, um, and I ran the risk of that. People were saying, oh, it must be intimidating. And I thought, you know, there's nothing I can do but do my job, which is to try to play Harry Bosch, the, the Bosch of the books. And either people will accept it or they won't. So fortunately they did, but yeah, it was a whole new idea. And, and I was, uh, I was not familiar with it. I mean, I really didn't even, I didn't even have Netflix or any streaming service at that point. I didn't, I didn't, I got a smart TV and I told them not to hook up anything because it scared me. So, (laughs) cause you didn't want to have somebody walking around and somebody walking around knowing what your, your purchasing power is just through your television shows. But I mean, look, we're, we're, we're sitting here on Peacock right now on a streamer and, um, and, uh, 10 years ago, uh, or t- I guess eight years ago, 2013. Uh, I mean, when you're saying, Hey, I'm doing a sh- TV show for Amazon where people are saying like, well, that's where I get my stuff. I mean, you had to probably explain to your friends or maybe have explained to you what the heck that was all about when you were starting this program off. Back I then. did a hundred percent and they were, you know, now, what Amazon did was they didn't just come out of the box with one thing. I mean, we were their their drama, but they came out with, um, you know, options uh, uh, of programming and kind of, you know, it was a springboard from there. Um, so they they were prepared. But, yeah, uh, yeah, there were there were a lot of people who were kind of but, you know, everything was kind of happening all at once. You had. You know, as Amazon was there, it was the time, but they were really at the ground floor. And then you had Apple TV and, um, you know, and, and Netflix and Hulu and Roku and, um, and you know, now you have Peacock and HBO Max and, um, you know, Disney Plus, and, which for a guy like me is fantastic um, because I, I will uh, I will literally – um, stay in my pajamas the entire day and just <laughs> well, bin- binge watch episodes of the Six Million Dollar Man. Uh, <laughs> I and I I I cheers you for that. I tip my figurative cap for you on that, Titus Welliver. I thought you were going to say that because you're you're invariably on something somewhere uh, on some streamer somewhere, whether it's Deadwood or. Um, you know, Gone Baby Gone or Brooklyn South or you know, a repeat of NYPD Blue, Sons of Anarchy. I mean. That's what I thought you meant that it's good for you because invariably somewhere somebody's streaming something you're doing, you know, and I'm not getting paid a cent for it. But, um, <laughs> wow. I have really stepped on something right there. I stepped in it. Well, at least hold on a second. Hold on a second. Do you, do you at least get a free Amazon prime card? Do you at least get no, that? I don't. I what don't. the hell? Every, my friends all said that in the beginning. They went, Oh, so now you have free prime. And I went, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I but guess anything I learned, look, you know what? I mean, uh, the uh, um, <laughs> I did learn that, and I, I you know I, I'm not 
dissimilar to my father. I mean, with my kids, I've always been open the door in the morning and I'm like, go outside and play and do things and don't come back unless you have to go to the bathroom or you need a drink of water or you're hungry. And, (laughs) you know, (laughs) then there's me now, you know, and I've always been that guy. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm saying to my kids, where are you going? Oh, you know, dad, the world's open up and I'm going to go and have lunch with my friends. Oh, but there's a bionic woman marathon. <laughs> the and, old Lindsay you know, Wagner yeah. defense. I like it. Um, I, I, I like that. <laughs> I like that. You know, Titus, it's funny. I've got a 12, a 10, and a 7-year-old. And we're the same way, trying to my wife and I, trying to get him off a screen. And my 12-year-old right now, sometimes we catch him watching the worst crap on YouTube, where it's just somebody who invariably does admittedly have like 30 million followers. And all they do is just sit there and they get all these videos from somebody else's phones and just say the snarkiest stuff. And they're watching this garbage. And I'm like, get the hell off of YouTube. And my 12-year-old son says, Dad, the Rich Eisen show's all over YouTube. What's your problem? And I'm like... (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, yeah, I don't uh, yeah, have, have quite an answer for that sort of thing. I said, but at least my show's not crap. That's, what, that's my response. <laughs> that's what I say. I know, but the, that's the, I know. It, 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 you know what? My, my kids are, are, are 15, 19, and 22. And I, you know, my 15-year-old, uh, I don't want to say that she goes down that rabbit hole, but every now and then, you know, this TikTok thing and stuff like that, mm-hmm. I go, what a, but then I, you know, then I find myself, you know, sounding like, you know, when I was your age, you know, uh, you know, but, but I raised my kids because I didn't like SpongeBob SquarePants and the offerings that were out there when my kids were little. So I, I went out and if I couldn't find it in the store, I would go on eBay. And so my kids were raised on Johnny Quest nice. and the six million dollar man. I know I'm I keep it's, I don't, I'm not friends with Lee Majors. I just want you to know. <laughs> um, but all this, like, Rat Patrol, Time Tunnel, Lost in Space. Attaboy. You know, I, I, uh, with my kids, I would just say, look, F Troop, you know. Nice. <laughs> a- anything that I could get my hands on, because I, w- I would look at the stuff that they were watching on some of these kids' channels, and I would go, it's crap. Crap. It's, la- it's not even good. I know. Even, it's not even good. Titus Welliver here on the Rich Eisen Show. So when did you show your kids Deadwood? When did that happen? Oh, they kind of came at that on their own. I walked in <laughs> on my uh, my middle child Quinn when he was I uh, he was he was way too young to be <laughs> looking at it, but he got curious and popped in. And I walked in, and it was you know and, and, you know they it, we were feeding a pig to you know feeding the guy to woos pigs or something, and he was like, "Daddy, look, you're on TV," and I went, "Oh my God, turn it off, turn it off." <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it, it was like, it. you know, catching your kid with a Playboy magazine. I was like, oh, you're not ready for that. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, it, that, that that's one thing for sure. So uh, I, I just know uh, I'm such a huge fan of that show. Uh, what was it like working on it? Because I, I sometimes had to watch a show two, three times to understand it. I'm wondering what it was like to read the script and then have to learn those lines in like the most profane iambic pentameter, you know, and and... Um, what was that like for you to be with the stars there as well and whatnot? Titus, you got a good well, story? Was, you know, it was really exciting. And that was, uh, I had done several other television series with David Milch. And this was a, a talk about, you know, stepping out of your wheelhouse and your comfort zone. Um, and I came in at the very end of the first season. And, uh, you know, David has a process in, in his writing. You know, we would, there would be sort of, summaries of what was to come but a lot of the um scenes were written um you know the day of Mm. or the night before and so uh you know that's a very difficult dialogue to learn under any circumstances to get it uh very kind of last minute um is a whole other set of challenges but it's david milch and nobody nobody writes like he does and so it was a huge gift and obviously um, an amazing ensemble of actors. Um, and, uh, you know, 99% of my stuff that I did on that show was with Ian McShane. So that oh, gosh. in itself was um, was amazing. And he's, you know, Ian is one of the most um, 
you know, people go like, oh, you must have been terrified and, and how intimidating. And I, I said, you know, actually, no, because Ian is the most generous actor on the planet. And he's also a he's hilariously funny <laughs> and is an amazing storyteller. But um, just to be in his presence and to watch him parse a scene, knowing that he would have gotten, you know, the curly fax pages at one o'clock in the morning the night before. And then, you know, you're sitting in a room with him while, where he's doing, you know, four pages of dialogue where you've got a small interjection here or there. And it's, you know, it's something to behold. I mean, it's, it's that one thing where you go, wow, now you get to see uh, an actor operating and firing on all cylinders and it's, and it, and it surpasses any kind of, um, you know, idea or, or, or fantasy of what it could be, but you're in the presence of it and you get to witness it. It was just an amazing experience and a very close knit group of people, very, very tight ensemble. And it was a, you know, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. And I, I think I, everybody who was involved would say, you know, when you work with David Milch, um, it makes you a better actor. And, um, and so that experience is invaluable. Titus Welliver here on the Rich Eisen Show. Bosch uh, season, uh, seventh and final season of Bosch premiering on Amazon Prime Video uh, this coming Friday. Uh, I couldn't help but notice you've been in every single uh, Ben Affleck directed film. How did do you guys tie it? Or is that you're from Connecticut? Is that a New England thing? Or what, what is it? What, what's your connection there with Ben? You know, I, uh, I auditioned for Gone Baby Gone. And... Uh, Reluctantly, because the, the the breakdown description of the character was uh, a character that was uh, 10 to 15 years older than I was. Um, I was shooting Deadwood at the time, so I had hair down to my shoulders <laughs> and a beard to the middle of my chest. And um, so I thought, I'm not going to get this part. But it was, you know, I just thought, well, why not? I read the script, and the script was amazing. So I went in and because I I lived uh, uh, in Boston and lived in Maine, went to boarding school in Maine. I I knew the dialect. I knew I kind of knew the world that these characters lived in, um, and I just uh, kind of gave it my all. And then was very lucky that uh, um, that Ben cast me in that, and he and I got on. I, I, he's without question one of the best directors I've ever worked with, and he's uh, he's a he's an excellent. Uh, uh, actor and uh, a great writer. And he's also just a very, very good human being um, and very, very prepared, um, has every single shot in his head. Um, and I, uh, I feel really, really privileged to have been there, uh, you know, on the ground floor when he did Gone Baby Gone and to be there uh, in the, in his progression, you know, his evolution as a, as a director um, we already knew he was a great actor and a writer before he ever directed. Um, but, um, you know, a great privilege and uh, an exciting place to be and work with. And I love working with him. And I'm, you know, I'm waiting for him to to call me up and say, let's go do something else again. So, or, or if I have to, I'll go and ring his doorbell and say, <laughs> hire me. So uh, it, you spending all that time in Boston, is it safe to say then you're a Red Sox fan that was strolling around Fenway Park at the end of the town? Or or is that yeah. a safe? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah 100%, 100%. I mean, um, you know, that's one of the things of, you know, because I'm, re- you know, I'm really a New Yorker, Philly guy, but I spent a lot of formulative time mm-hmm. up in, in Boston and in Maine going to have gone to high school there, um, in boarding school and, uh, being there at a time when, you know, the teams weren't doing all that well. Uh, the Bruins were doing great, but you know, the Red Sox were kind of slumpy and, um, uh, although the Celtics then being there late, you know, and the whole, when, when bird came, mm-hmm. the, 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 you know, those are the, those are the great, the great years and, and, and that part of the franchise with bird and the whole thing with, you know, with magic and that rivalry and that's basketball was a whole different level. Um, but I, I enjoy sports. So I'm, you know, people say to me, well, and I'm of a generation where you could like, uh, 
players from different teams. Now everybody's like, choose a side, choose a side. <laughs> and I say to my kids, don't listen to that. You know, um, you know, I can remember it, 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 as a kid, you know, that I liked all the different quarterbacks from teams, you know, Roman Gabriel and Joe Cap and Fran Tarkenton. And you're like, oh, well, Gail Sayers plays for the Bears and Dick Buckus is for the Bears. But and it was cool. You could you could one day wear a Bears jersey and the next day wear a Philadelphia Eagles jersey or an L.A. Rams and nobody would get in your kitchen about it nowadays. <laughs> yeah, that's a know. different story. That's if a I different... wear a Red Sox hat here, people are, you know, spitting at me. Um <laughs> But I but I go to a Dodgers game. If I go to a Dodgers game, I'm I'm wearing my Dodgers hat. So right, you know. And I'm from the East Coast, and you know I always made fun of Dodgers fans uh, getting there late and leaving early. But now I'm definitely one of those. There's no question about it. <laughs> I'll be on the East Coast, like look at these people showing up second inning and leaving in the seventh. And right now, if the if the game's like out of reach in the sixth, I am out the door. I'm yanking my kids out of there so fast. It's not even fun. No, I know because you know you got you know you got to consider parking. Forget Please it. forget it. Exactly, Titus. Uh, this has been a blast, man. Uh, congrats on uh, the final season uh, of Bosch, but there is a spinoff series coming. Correct. That's 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 true. in. The, this is true. Tell me what. Tell me it about is. that. So well, it's we sort of the you know we where we leave off. Uh, we have a bit of an Easter egg, and there is a setup at the end of this okay. season seven. Uh, which kind of um, is the connective tissue that paves the way um, for the new show, which is is being touted as a spinoff. But, you know, truth be known, it's really it, it's a continuation. Um, it's just not, uh, you know, with Harry being in the Hollywood station anymore. Um, and uh, so it's it's uh, Harry Bosch and Matty Bosch and Money Chandler. And, you know, their stories are all are all linked but there's also a kind of um, uh, autonomy at the same at the same time with with storyline. So I think it's a, you know it's a continuing uh, part of the telling of of the Bosch you know universe, and uh, I'm sure we'll pepper that universe periodically with with cameos um, from the characters from the original show. But I I, I, I shy from calling it a spinoff I, and more really a continuation and it's, Excellent. it's set up. So I'm, I'm excited for, for this season to come out. And I think now the, uh, the fun part, the, the, the gift of it will be when people get to the end and they see the Easter egg, they'll go, Oh, okay. Uh, and it will, it will light the fire for them to, um, you know, want to come back and not feel like they're going to be disappointed because you know, Harry's wearing an ascot and, you know, <laughs> and Gucci loafers. That's not going to happen. Okay. He's, still the, he's still the same guy. Titus, this has been a blast. Uh, I'd love to have you in studio. I mean, we didn't even hit David Lynch or Stephen Bochco or any of the people from your past. I mean, we're a big pop culture nuts here. And uh, we, we do have, um, uh, certainly I'd love you in studio because we have a Deadwood hat here that's been signed by uh, anybody who's been in Deadwood that's been here in studio from Timothy Oliphant, Ian McShane, uh, Garrett Delahunt, W. Earl Brown, Kristen Bell. Everybody signs it with their favorite curse word that they said on the show. So I need you. I need to add you to this mix. Well, we'll make that happen. Thank you, Titus. I appreciate it. Congrats on the, the final season uh, hitting uh, Amazon streamers on Friday, and let's chat down the road, please. Thank you very much. You guys have a great day. Right back at you. What a blast. At Wellover underscore Titus on Good Twitter, man. at Titus Wellover official on Instagram. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.